What's up, everybody? I'm KPR, and this is another episode of Five to Follow. I'm going to introduce you to five photographers who I think you should be following and checking out their work. I'll provide you with links in the description so you can check out their websites and check out their Instagrams. So stick around to the end of the video to see all five of these fantastic photographers. While you're here, subscribe to this channel. I see a lot of you watching these videos that haven't subscribed yet. So let's take a moment right now to rectify that. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you don't miss a single video when they drop. Also, some of the photographers that I'm profiling today have books, monographs that you can buy for your bookshelf, for your coffee table, for your photography studio. I'll link to those in the description below. Grab one of those, check them out. You won't regret it. The books are amazing. Let's go. To start us off today, we have one of my personal favorite photographers. Peggy Sirota. Peggy Sirota is an editorial fashion and beauty photographer who leans hard into the lifestyle approach to her work. If you've ever walked past a magazine rack anywhere, then you've probably seen her work on the covers of those magazines. Aside from having a fantastic body of work, if you watch Peggy's behind the scenes videos on her website, you'll see she just loves to have fun. That's someone after my own heart. She seems like the kind of person whose energy fills a whole room. As someone who started studying and performing in improv comedy more than 20 years ago, I know from watching those videos that she's my kind of people. And I find it inspiring that her personality and her exuberance come through in her work and shine like a beacon. It's it's so incredible to see how she can make her subjects come alive. I try to infuse my work with my personality, and you should too. And Peggy Sirota is someone that you should be following because she has a lot to teach us about bringing your soul and your entire vibe into your work. So check out her website, check out her Instagram, follow her, you're not going to regret it. Next up, we have Tina Picard. Tina is one of the best and most prolific fashion photographers in Canada. Based out of the national capital region, she shoots primarily in Toronto and Montreal because that's primarily where fashion industry exists here in Canada, at least from a commercial photography perspective. Her client list and editorial credits are extensive. Her work has appeared in Vulcan, Diffuse, Ion, and dozens of other magazines. She's been commissioned to work on campaigns for Power Footwear, Couple, Stella Valentina, Ruby Cosmetics. Walmart Canada, and so many more. Tina also specializes in model testing and helping models build their portfolios. Her work is highly regarded by all the major modeling agencies here in Toronto, such as Elite, Ciotti, Delcido, Plutino, b and and pretty much every other agency that you can think of. You'll find her work on comp cards when you walk into those offices and in the portfolios of dozens and dozens of other high-end models working here in Toronto. Check out her website to see her full portfolio and definitely follow her on Instagram. Check out her stories archive where she posts a lot of BTS footage and shots of her setups and her work. I'm a big fan of her work, so give her a follow and check out her work. As a Canadian and North American photographer living and working just outside of the greater Toronto area, I mostly see the work of people in my regional sphere. And I think most of us do see the work of, of people who surround us so in, in our localities. It's why I spend a lot of time preparing for these videos, researching photographers outside of North America who I believe we should all get to know better. One of those photographers is Amika Okarike. Amika is a Nigerian photographer and artist who splits his time living and working between Lagos in Nigeria and Berlin. A past member of the Nigerian photography collective Depth of Field, he exhibits his work at festivals and events around the world. Okarike is the founder and artistic director of Invisible Borders Trans-African Project. That's an artist-led initiative that addresses gaps and misconceptions posed by the frontiers dividing the 54 countries of the African continent. He's also the creator and host of Enkata Podcast Station, where he interviews artists and creatives who he finds compelling, engaging, and relevant to our time. That's something I can relate to. I'll link to that in the description below, along with his website and social media. Check out his website, check him out on Instagram, give him a follow, and take a look at some work that is outside of North America. Next up, we have... Lisa Christine. Lisa Christine is a humanitarian photographer, activist, and speaker. There's a special place in my heart for humanitarian photographers. One of my personal values is to create meaningful work. Whether I'm creating value for a client or for a cause, I want to make sure that in the end, I'm giving more than I'm getting. As a photographer, Lisa Christine's work documents indigenous cultures and social causes, something she's done in more than 100 countries. A majority of her work as a photographer and activist focuses 
on the ongoing modern day slavery of people around the world in countries such as Ghana and Nepal. In 2009, she collaborated with Free the Slaves and released the monograph Slavery, an excellent book that I'll link to below that you should check out. She later released another book exhibiting the horrors of modern day slavery titled Bound to Freedom, which Sir Richard Branson described as lifting the veil on the atrocities of slavery. In 2012, she gave an absolutely riveting TED talk on her work that I highly recommend you watch. Link is in the description. Check it out. As an activist, Lisa founded the Human Thread Foundation, whose mission is to educate the public and drive awareness about human dignity and human trafficking through interactive exhibitions, educational programming, and global awareness campaigns. You can purchase Lisa's artwork from her website and get one of her monographs from the links in the description below. Follow her on Instagram and Facebook, but definitely check out the Human Thread Foundation and the work they're doing. Support them in any way you can, whether that's through a donation, through volunteering, or simply following them on their Instagram account. Awareness matters. The final photographer for this episode is just in a class all on his own. He has visibility that exceptionally few photographers will ever achieve. He's one of only a handful of photographers who can say that most of the people on the planet, literally billions of people, have seen his work. This is Michael Muller. Muller is one of the leading key art photographers in the world, and his photography is the basis for some of the largest blockbuster movie posters worldwide. His work has defined the superhero look with that classic edge lighting and low camera position. Michael Muller basically has the job I want. Michael Muller has shot just an absolute ton of movie posters, editorial portraits, commercial work, and sharks. Yep. Sharks. Over the past five years or so, he spent a great deal of time underwater swimming and photographing sharks. This has led to just an awesome monograph published by Tashin, and given his connections to the film and TV world, his shark images also feature prominently as key art for Shark Week. Anyways, look, look at his incredible body of work. I'm just absolutely in awe of everything Michael does. I love it. It's brilliant. Check out his website, follow him on Instagram, and grab yourself a copy of Sharks. Link is in the description for that book below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video as that really helps me out and I really appreciate it. But it actually also helps YouTube know that this is the kind of video that you wanna see more of. That's it for today. Now go take some photos.